Hey guys, it's Rosie, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be bringing you on a hike. We're hiking Mount Killington, which is in Vermont. It is a 4,000 footer and I'm currently working on my winter 67, so that is the 67 4,000 foot mountains in New England. I've done the New Hampshire 48, so I just have the mountains left in Vermont and Maine. This is my first of the Vermont mountains. My goal of today's hike is first of all to finish the mountain, but I also want to teach you guys how to be prepared as much as possible when you're winter hiking. There have been a lot of deaths in the mountains this year and I really want to be able to share my knowledge in hopes that everyone who goes hiking can be prepared as much as possible for any situation that could happen. I'm going to start out by showing you guys what I'm wearing and then later on in the hike I'm going to bring you through everything that I brought in my pack. My goal with hiking is to bring basically as much stuff as I think I could possibly need so that I can combat any possible issue that I could have. I'm going for a safe hike, not a fast or light hike, so let me show you guys what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing this rain hat. It was snowing a little bit so I wanted to make sure I stay dry. So I'm wearing my puffy coat I have a fleece layer and then I have a long sleeve athletic shirt also. I'll show you guys that more later. And then on the bottom, I'm just wearing leggings and my winter hiking boots. I do have all of my extra layers in my pack, but I didn't want to wear them now so that I don't sweat. It is pretty warm out and we're starting to go up. So I want to make sure that I'm not going to get too warm. It's time for some water and I want to show you guys how I specially pack my water. I do not use the water pouches on the outside of my pack because your water will freeze really easily out there. And I actually store it upside down because it freezes first at the top. So you want to be able to drink your water even if it's starting to freeze. And you can put insulators on them. I didn't today because it's pretty warm out and it's inside my pack. So it's pretty insulated already. Now at a snack time, I'm gonna eat some pumpkin bread and it's kind of common sense. When you're hiking, you need to bring more food than you would eat on a normal day. So we bring like cookies, pumpkin bread, sandwiches, just sugary, carby stuff to keep you with energy. We bring bars too, just big variety. Make sure you bring more than you would normally eat because you're expending energy. So it's starting to get windy as you might be able to hear and we're almost there so I'm going to put on my snow pants. I've been fine with what I'm wearing right now the whole time but I know it's going to get colder and it's best to put on layers before you're really cold. So I'm going to probably put on my spikes because another hiker told us that it's going to get really icy like right up at the end. So snow pants, spikes, and then gators actually gators first then spikes i'm going to put on my spikes because we're preparing for the ice even though we don't actually know that it's a thing so these are they're kind of like mini crampons i didn't even bother wearing my micro spikes earlier so i'm going to put these on and i will show you guys what they look like when they're on they're a little stuck Well, we made it up. That was so chill. It was like really easy going up and then there's just a little sea part right at the end. We are heading over to the lodge. Might get some refreshments there. It's really nice to do a hike, especially if you're new to winter hiking that has a lodge or a hut near the top so you can just chill out there. Whoa, that is so pretty. 
Not sure how you're supposed to get here on skis. There is one issue with our plan. I did step out of one of my spikes somewhere along the way. I think it must have been recently. Don't know exactly where, but my dad went back to find it. But yeah, make sure your spikes are tight. Make sure they fit your boots at the beginning of every season, especially because sometimes they do loosen up after use. And that is not something that I checked before hiking today. Hopefully I will end this hike with both of them. Who knows? So we got down from the top, the little stomach cone thing, and honestly that steep part was really underwhelming. I was expecting an ice flow. It was really just like a regular steep pitch of snow. So I shed a layer a couple minutes ago. If you're too warm, you sweat, then you get cold. If you're too cold, you know where that goes, hypothermia. So make sure that you're listening. If your hands are cold, put your phone away. It's not worth a picture to lose fingers. Put your gloves on if you need to wear your gloves. Take them off if you're warm. It was pretty windy on top. All I did was fleece hat. These glasses are really great. I do also have a pair of goggles in my backpack, which are just in case it's like really driving and it's going up and under my glasses. So just try to have as much that I could possibly need within reason where my pack isn't to completely weighted down by stuff. I'm about halfway through my water, so that's a reasonable place to be on the way down. I like to have some left, but I don't want to have, you know, like three liters left at the end. I brought two liters, it was a pretty short hike, and honestly, this is like one of the easiest 4,000 footers that I can remember hiking in the past several years. almost back to the car and as you can see it is starting to get dark another little piece of hiking knowledge you should never go hiking without a headlamp especially in the winter you definitely need to bring a headlamp and a full set of extra batteries just in case you were to get lost you want to be able to see so you can keep walking so that you don't get super cold get hypothermia always bring a headlamp and it's really important that you keep all of your batteries in your pockets so that they're warm the whole way. I keep my phone, my leggings pocket under my snow pants. I keep my GoPro in either one of my coat pockets or one of my snow pants pockets. Then I keep my headlamp and extra batteries in some of the other pockets, either my other pant pocket or pocket in my coat or whatever. It is very, very important that you have a source of light just in case.
made it back to the car and that was a really fun hike. So at home, I'm going to go through all of my stuff with you. I'm gonna talk about the stuff that I didn't use on this hike, why you need it. And I'm basically just gonna go over every piece of gear that I have, where it's from, how to use it, all of that. I want you guys to be as safe as you can when you're winter hiking. So let's head home, let's get something to eat and then I'll go through all my stuff. All right, so I'm back home and I'm here with my pack, which I repacked with everything minus like food. It was a very warm hike that I brought you guys along on. So I wasn't wearing my very, very warmest gear. It was also pretty dry, so I didn't have oh, tons of pairs of gloves or a bunch of extra socks. Always know what the weather is because you need to try to be prepared for that. And then also bring extra stuff just in case. Um, but you don't need to be carrying around like every single piece of gear ever if it's going to be a sunny and beautiful day. So just keep in mind what the weather is going to be like and plan for that. This is an Osprey Xena 85 and I took off the brain. It does have a brain that I believe adds like 20, 25 or so liters, but I don't bring that for day hikes because I don't need that much space. So I'm going to show you guys what I have on the outside first. I have my flip gloves. These are from REI. I wear these on the way up on every single hike ever. You have to bring a pair of gloves and a hat on summer hikes. I know, it doesn't seem right. Summer, it's warm, but it's not always warm at the top. So I always bring these gloves in the summer as well. I also have my winter gaiters. These are taller than summer gaiters. I also have my rescue gloves. These are mountain hardware. They're like leatherish and I don't exactly know what they are called, but they are very warm and these are the ones that I put on when I cannot get into my bag because my hands are so cold. So these are like, in case of emergency, they're already on the outside. And notice they are hung from the top so that snow doesn't go in. That would be like terrible, cold. Also in here, I have my hat. This is my favorite fleece hat. I also in here have my micro spikes. These are just easily accessible on the outside and I did end up wearing them on the way down, I believe, so it's just easier to be able to have them accessible. So I've got these two like side pockets on the back here, which are super handy. So this is the one that I put my food in. So in here, I have my sunglasses. I have that same pocket on this side, which holds more of my emergency gear. So this has my poncho. This is a used poncho. I like to reuse them. I would only plan to hike in the rain if it were summer, so I bring this just in case it was nasty and I didn't expect that it was going to rain. Right now in here, I have my headlamp and extra batteries. Always, always, always keep your extra batteries and your headlamp in your pocket the entire hike. Like, don't even bother to hike if you're not gonna bring a headlamp and batteries and keep them on you because they get cold, they get discharged, and then you can't use them, and then you're lost in the dark. We don't want that to happen. So, headlamp, I just put it in here, just so that I can remember, just in case I were bringing a different coat, because I do have a couple different coat options. In here, I also have a mask. I also have my pack cover. I haven't had to use this yet, but this was, it's an Osprey one that I just bought, I think, last year, but there's no way this is gonna fit back in the bag. So I'm trying to save I use for it until I absolutely need it because a teeny tiny bag. I also have some, I believe I have both hand and toe warmers. Those are just a nice emergency thing. I don't ever use them, but just in case I ever needed to use them, they're there. So before I go to the inside of the pack, I want to show you guys what I'm wearing. I'm just wearing like a regular long sleeve athletic shirt underneath. You can't really see the difference. So long sleeve athletic shirt, and it's important that you always wear wicking clothes because they dry really fast. You want clothes that dry fast so that you don't get super cold. And then I have a fleece over that. I'm also wearing a pair of just regular leggings. And depending on what the weather's like, I will either have leggings on by themselves, which is what I did on that hike, or I'll have snow pants on by themselves, no leggings underneath. Or if it's really cold, I'll have leggings underneath snow pants. So here are my snow pants. They're just regular ones, same ones I use for skiing just totally generic snow pants. These are my winter hiking boots. They are keen, they're very warm. I love them so much. I like them even better than my regular season boots. They are a lot taller than regular boots and they keep the snow out, very toasty warm. They are rated for negative 40 degrees, so that's pretty cold. I have one more thing before we go in my pack. So you guys probably know hiking socks. 
you've been hiking. I would not recommend winter hiking if you have never been hiking before. It is completely different than regular season hiking. I wear, just to make sure I don't get blisters, my family wears, it's called Luco Tape. You just put it on your heel where you would typically get blisters if you had like heel rubbing or if you have a toe that rubs, something like that. Put this tape on it. It's a kind of medical tape and you usually do not get blisters with it. I've never gotten a blister with it. Okay, so in my pack, oh, I don't have my puffy coat down here, but that is the coat that I wore all the way up the mountain and I wore it underneath my ski coat as well at the top and on the way down. So this is my ski coat. This is one, I wouldn't typically wear this on the way up. This one I wear if it's snowing because it's waterproof, but I actually just got a new coat. So if it's gonna be really cold, this is what I'm gonna wanna use. This is a wrap down coat. Um, it is so incredibly warm. I love this coat. I haven't had a chance to use it out in the field, but I will and gonna keep me really warm. The next thing going down in my bag typically would be food I guess because I don't have a brain on this pack at the moment. That's where I would normally keep food if I were backpacking. So it would be like food and then like a coat and then this bag has all of my extra hats and such. So I had a hat on the outside and some gloves on the outside. This has my extra stuff so I have the turtleneck, my first aid kit so this has like pocket knife, toilet paper, um, some extra tape, hand gel, little first aid kit, rope, compass, all that stuff. I also have two um, space blankets. This one's a bivy and this one is just a regular one. So I'm actually gonna put this out on the outside. That's where it should be. And here I also have an extra pair of socks. I also have an ear warmer. I used to be really into hiking up with ear warmers on, but honestly now I either just wear a rain hat, which is what I was wearing on the hike I brought you guys on or I'll just do no hat on the way up. Depending on the weather, I would likely also have another pair of gloves. I do have a couple other pairs of gloves that I sometimes bring. For the hike that I packed this bag for, I really didn't need extras just because it was really short and I already have two pairs of gloves here, so I was good with that. For like average winter conditions in New England, I would say that I would bring three pairs of gloves because I have my up ones and then I would have my like top and down ones and then rescue gloves just in case. So just as long as I have one extra pair. I do sometimes also bring an extra um, like base layer, just an extra like long sleeve working shirt. Just depending on the weather, if it's a really long hike, I probably will sweat a bit and then I want to change so I could be warm. Just try to keep all my clothes dry, at least the ones I'm wearing dry. So just try to be mindful of that and I might bring an extra shirt depending on what the circumstances are. So down in my pack at the bottom, this is where the really heavy stuff is. So I have two just like plastic water bottles. They're a liter each and I bring plastic water bottles because they're a lot lighter. I've seen people who bring like Yetis and you know Hydro Floss and I just think that's like way too heavy. So I have two liters of water bottles in Nalgene's. Also inside my pack it insulates them. So you can put insulators on them and put them in the outside. I just find that to be a little annoying getting them in and out. So I prefer to have no insulator on and then just put them inside my pack. And when you're storing them, store them upside down so that your water doesn't freeze around the rim and then you can't get to your water. That's no fun. And the last thing in my pack at the bottom is my health sounds. This is what they look like. They just like collapse like that. And these are well worn as you can see, but they've been very helpful on many, many hikes. Your micro spikes can only go so far. I would never ever walk on a like ice sheet or ice flow with micro spikes. It would just not be a good idea, but with these, you feel a lot more confident doing that. They're not quite crampons, so they're a lot safer for, you know, cutting up your legs or getting your foot caught or stuff like that because the actual spikes are smaller. I just have a couple more things to show you guys. So one of them is an ice axe. This is something that could be really helpful if you're on like a steeper slope. Ice axes can be used to basically stop yourself if you're sliding down or if you're climbing up. An ice flow, you can use it to kind of get an extra handhold. There are many different ways you can use these, but they can also be pretty dangerous, so it's really important that you know what you're doing. The reason I didn't bring an ice axe on this hike was because I looked at the trail reports, it didn't look that bad. I know there were no significantly steep sections, and there is a 
ski area on top so I wasn't super worried about the hike itself but it is always important to check your trail reports they will tell you if it's a well-known trail they will tell you what the trail's like, whether you need certain pieces of equipment. People know what they're talking about usually on those trail reports. Another thing, I would never ever ever recommend hiking alone in the winter. It can be so much more dangerous than hiking in the summer and especially if you're a beginner, just please don't hike alone in the winter. Everyone go out and buy your hike safe cards if you're going to be hiking in New Hampshire. As long as you're not found to be negligent, as long as you have all of your um, here to be safe. The proceeds from the cards go to support other rescues that have to happen. So it's just really important that we have those. Absolute last thing I'm going to talk about are snowshoes. I did not bring snowshoes on this hike because I had read the trail was pretty clear, pretty fine, so I didn't bring them. But these are the MSR Lightning Scent. They have lifters on them, so if you're looking for snowshoes for the winter. Make sure that they have lifters on them if you're going to be hiking because these are super helpful. So for example, if you're going up a slope like this, instead of your foot going up, down, up, down, your foot stops on the lifter. So you're going up and you have less to go. It's like a little ramp basically. It's pretty nice. These can be really helpful at breaking trail trying to not step through the trail. Also, you don't want to post holes, so these can help with that. Just, there are a lot of great uses for snowshoes. They're super helpful. We've had these for a long time and we've used them very often. So I would recommend snowshoes if you are committed to winter hiking. I just really want to teach everyone that I can how to winter hike safely if they're going to. I just am so devastated by how many losses that we have to have in the whites and in New England in general just because of people not knowing how to winter hike and how dangerous it is. So I just want to make sure that I can educate as many people as possible. Hopefully this video helped you be a safer hiker. Hope you have fun winter hiking and good luck!